Imagine a world that has suddenly been infested by dangerous zombies. What would you do in this grappling survival apocalypse? Be worried, try to fight, take refugee? Well, our protagonist Akira does none of that as he's just relieved that he finally doesn't need to go to work anymore. Get ready to venture into the nonsensically fun-filled world of Zom 100 where Akira, a worn-down office worker, finally decides to live his life by his rules and makes a bucket list of 100 things he wants to do before he turns into a zombie. Buckle up your seatbelts because it's going to be a wild ride, anime fans. As a man wildly runs away from an oncoming horde of zombies threatening to ambush him from all sides, he angrily shouts that he can't take it anymore. Meanwhile, Aker is drearily watching the TV show in darkness while holding a cup noodle in his hands and says that it sounds like heaven compared to where he works before starting to think about how it started three years ago, when he landed a role in the production department, a dream job for him. Before his meeting with Kosugi, the department chief, Akira accidentally collides with Sori, a beautiful accounting department employee who shares some business insights and warmly wishes him luck. His first day at work ends with a company gathering at a bar where colleagues inquire about his college experience. There he spots Sari and resolves to impress her through hard work. However, his co-workers transform into mindless puppets as soon when the time to go back approaches, leaving Akira puzzled about their bizarre behavior. Despite sleepless nights and exhaustion, he perseveres to give his all and learns about the company's employee-friendly policies. Kosugi assigns him a task for the absent Takahashi, and Sori kindly brings him food during his non-stop work before the CEO takes her inside a room making Akira discover that she's the CEO's mistress. Akira contemplates leaving but refrains from burdening his team by finding a new one. Entering his third year, he considers suicide due to stress and seeking solace, watches shows on workplace etiquette and worker well-being. One day, he awakens sleep-deprived, notices a fee reminder for his bike space, and visits the building manager, surprisingly finding a zombie instead. Chased by zombies, he strangely finds joy in the apocalypse, since he's now relieved from work. In the midst of chaos, he seeks a safe haven, worried about Sari, and happily decides to express his feelings for her, but finds the zombie turns CEO in her house. Tackling the boss out of a window, he resigns and finds Sori turn into a zombie, as well before professing his love. Venturing out at night to a store, Akira reflects on his life and crafts a bucket list with the 100 goals he wants to achieve before he gets converted into a zombie. Akira. Hurriedly waking up from a nightmare, realizes the zombie apocalypse gives him an unexpected permanent break from work and relishes this freedom by drinking beer and cleaning his home as he sees a news reporter detail the chaos before a zombie attack ends her life, making him briefly ponder on his situation before waving it off and returning to beer. When he runs out of beer, Akira reluctantly ventures out and a human couple notices him through a nearby balcony, so he shares his situation and plans promising supplies after visiting the convenience store. At the store, Akira spots a girl drinking water. While grabbing beer, he tries to exchange numbers, but she declines and tells him off for risking his life for beer, before saying that she won't team up with someone who endangers himself just for beer. Ignoring her, Akira faces a group of zombies entering the store. Surprisingly, she rescues him from a truck crashing in to eliminate zombies, and Akira is thankful but finds his bike damaged. He locates a motorcycle and returns to the couple's place, only to discover their blood-soaked, damaged home before realizing that they've become zombies or met a grim fate. Disheartened, he heads home and deeply thinks about it, marking 33 items off his bucket list before sleep. In a flashback, the girl Akira met at the store exercises while listening to emergency broadcasts, attempting to contact a station with no response. She compiles activities to ward off zombification and she studies zombie types and notes their behaviors using binoculars before eventually venturing out for essential supplies, but contemplates indulging in her favorite dessert, sakura mochi. Suddenly, Akira enters the store singing his beer song, and she spots the car before it crashes into the store. Returning home, she reviews the footage and notices Akira right before he enters while questioning her choice not to get sakura mochi at the store. During the chaos at Club Shoe Time, where Shu and other managers defend against a zombie horde, Akira is unwavering in his resolve to locate his friend, Kencho. Flashing back a few hours, Akira's attempt to check off a bucket list item, growing a beard, goes wrong. While tangled in his facial hair experiment, Akira's phone suddenly receives a barrage of notifications, revealing restored Wi-Fi access, and he's surprised by over three years' worth of unread messages, and among them, he discovers Kencho's name. Fueled by the hope that Kencho is still alive, Akira becomes determined to find him. Meanwhile, Kencho struggles to survive at the club and gets trapped in a bondage room where he runs into another zombie. Akira reaches out to him via phone and reassures him of their meeting in Shinjuku, disregarding his urgent warnings. During his journey to Shinjuku, Akira reminisces about Kencho's background, a popular college student, Akira's closest friend, and a party enthusiast who later achieves success as a real estate agent. 
Despite moments of irritation caused by Kenshiro's advice to leave his exploitative job, Akira remains committed to rescuing his friend. As Shu succumbs to the zombies, the ensuing noise diverts their attention and Kencho seizes the opportunity to escape the bondage room, leading to an eventual encounter with Akira. Overcome with remorse for not heeding his advice and admitting his envy of Kencho's success, Akira offers a heartful apology, and they soon find themselves being ambushed by zombies, so they take refuge on the rooftop. In a daring move, Akira leaps to a nearby building, urging Kencho to follow suit, and in the process, Kencho discloses that he never truly enjoyed his job and had merely been putting on an act for years. His real passion lies in becoming a stand-up comic, and Akira wholeheartedly encourages him to pursue that dream by quitting his job. Kencho takes a leap of faith, successfully making it to the other building, leaving his clothes behind. Later that night, as they converse on the rooftop, Kencho reveals his aspiration to save the apocalypse's survivors, even though Akira maintains some skepticism before they slowly fall asleep naked while heartily laughing with each other as another goal gets ticked off from Akira's bucket list. Akira, engrossed in a zombie-themed video game, and Kencho, the chef responsible for their rooftop meal, share lighthearted banter before Kencho playfully teases him about his dating life and wishes him luck. During their conversation, Kencho has a peek at Akira's bucket list, and Akira suggests he create his own list, but instead, Kencho decides to add items to Akira's list, underscoring his unwavering support after saving him from a near-death experience. Among Akira's bucket list goals is the desire to purchase a widescreen television, motivating their trip to Ikebukuro. As they talk, Kencho reveals his dream of becoming a stand-up comedian, leading Akira to think about his own dreams. Their journey takes an unexpected turn when they face zombies, but eventually find refuge in an underground mall where they meet other survivors. Recognizing an opportunity to fulfill one of Akira's bucket list items, the two friends decide to get to know the female survivors, Rika, Maki, and Yukari, who introduce themselves as flight attendants whose presence delights Akira and Kencho. Before he observes Kencho's success with one of the attendants and resorts to a humorous tequila stunt to make another one laugh, Akira's plan succeeds with the girls erupting in laughter. However, the tequila takes its toll making high run to a restroom. In his absence, Yukari checks on him while Kencho and Maki explore a store together while Rika shares her life dissatisfaction before a man in their company transforms into a zombie and attacks her. This alarms Kencho and Maki who blearily get up from a bed, naked. Meanwhile, Yukari confides in Akira, discussing her career uncertainties and reveals she has a boyfriend. Suddenly, Maki and Kencho encounter the zombified Rika, resulting in Maki's death while Kencho has to defend himself using Rika's suitcase. In another corner, Yukari and Akira have a candid conversation about their career dilemmas. Akira, reflecting on his journey, realizes that his dream of working in the production industry is not truly his own. During their discussion, the man from earlier arrives and attacks them and Akira manages to fend him off, but it becomes evident that Yukari has been infected. Despite Akira's efforts, Yukari urges him to leave her behind, confessing her love for her job despite her misgivings. Reluctantly, Akira goes away and reunites with Kencho, was successfully acquired an 8-key widescreen television. As they make their escape, Akira ponders on the words of Kencho and Yukari and decides to add a new item to his bucket list, to remember his childhood dream. Kencho and Akira, in the midst of a zombie outbreak, find themselves engaged in their respective activities, and he decides to dye his hair yellow. During a conversation, Akira opens up to Kencho about his desire to become a superhero dedicated to fighting zombies, a childhood dream he holds dear. Inspired by this aspiration, Akira decides to add it to his bucket list so the two friends leave on a trip to the aquarium. Within the aquarium, they venture into its behind-the-scenes areas where Akira stumbles upon a random shark suit stored in a locker. With creativity and some spray paint, he transforms it into his very own superhero costume. In a flashback, Akira had mentioned to Kencho his plan to use a shark suit as his superhero outfit, considering its design aimed at protecting humans from shark bites. Back in the present, Shizuka rushes past Akira and enters the aquarium in the company of a group of people. Akira seizes the opportunity to impress her by confronting the approaching zombies. He manages to barely defeat the zombies by hurling them into a nearby lake, though he's disheartened to find that Shizuka doesn't seem impressed by his actions. After rejoining Kencho and the other survivors, Akira gathers the courage to introduce himself to the girl he sought to impress, but she criticizes his behavior questioning his motives for helping others. Suddenly, they hear a loud banging sound and Akira and Kencho go to investigate before facing a zombified shark that has devoured some humans and can run on two legs. They all make a run for it, but a girl accidentally pushes aside Shizuka in her hurry before the door gets jammed and Akira notices her absence and returns to rescue her from the shark as she questions his determination to follow through on things. Shizuka devises a plan to defeat a shark, assigning roles for each member, but Akira faces the shark alone. Initially, it overwhelms him, but a clever distraction from Kencho ignites his determination and the girl tosses batteries to Akira, enabling him to deliver a powerful electric blow to the shark. 
after which he successfully checks off his superhero dream from his bucket list. Upon spotting Akira's bucket list, she remarks on the ironic contrast between their goals. Before parting ways, he asks about her future plans, and she reveals her desire to go to a safe and sustainable location before sharing her contact information and disclosing her name as Shizuka Mikazuki. As Akira and Kencho are engrossed in admiring some fancy watches, the lights suddenly go out, and they realize there's no water. Akira looks up at the night sky, reminiscing about his hometown, Gunma, and Kencho suggests that they should visit it to determine his parents' safety. Taking this idea seriously, Kencho and Akira carefully pack for their journey, getting ready to head to Gunma. During the drive, Akira expresses his desire to make the trip more comfortable by getting an RV. They arrive in an RV show, and there they unexpectedly run into Shizuka once again, and he invites her to join their journey, but she turns down the offer, citing her lack of a driver's license. Akira and Kencho still try to convince her to come along before unintentionally attracting the attention of numerous zombies. To escape the danger, they quickly jump into a random RV and speed away before Shizuka deduces that a virus may be the cause of the zombie outbreak and suggests that developing a vaccine could be a solution. Suddenly, they come across a spike strip obstacle, causing Kencho to injure himself while riding a motorcycle. To their surprise, they encounter a rival group led by Chief Kosugi, who used to be Akira's team leader at his workplace and Kosugi offers them shelter at his truck shop, complete with all basic necessities. While Akira appreciates the offer, he can't help but have a weird feeling after reuniting with a person who had made his life difficult. Kosugi, however, has ulterior motives and insists that Akira and his friends work for him for two days, using the threat of zombies to ensure their agreement. The next day, Akira observes the overall sense of misery among the people around him and discreetly stashes some beer to share with them later. When Kosuji catches wind of this, he initially questions the wasteful use of electricity. However, his stance changes when his colleagues decide to throw a welcoming party for Akira and his friends as he notices how Kosugi is manipulating the zombies for his own benefit. Later, Kencho and Shizuka discuss Akira's situation further, wondering why he's putting up with Kosugi's torment, and a brief flashback shows the extent of Kosugi's actions and how deeply they've scared Akira. Kosugi throws a party for his associates, while Shizuka watches from a distance and Akira grapples with his role as a waiter, while Kosugi makes inappropriate advances towards Shizuka, ordering her to pour him a drink. When Kosugi requests another beer, Akira mistakenly hands him an empty bottle, provoking his anger. Meanwhile, Shizuka reflects on her past, where she faced her father's high expectations. She had a dog named Ru and aspired to become a doctor, but gave up on her dream after her father had Ru killed due to financial concerns. Shizuka's life reveals her compliance with her father's orders, believing it's essential for her survival. After a confrontation with Akira, Kosugi implies that Akira should work for him instead of surviving the apocalypse with his friends. Shizuka recalls a moment from her past when her father pointed out the less fortunate, urging her to follow his orders, making her realize it was all for his benefit. In the RV, she adds an item to Akira's bucket list and informs Kosugi that they'll leave after the agreed two days. However, Akira decides to stay with Kosugi, feeling grateful to him. Before leaving, Shizuka reveals the truth about Kosugi's ulterior motives to Akira, who protects his bucket list and Akira expresses gratitude before happily telling Kosugi that he'll be leaving and choosing to face the outside world with his friends. A zombie suddenly rushes out from a delivery attack and wreaks havoc as more and more people get bitten and zombified so he takes charge and hoists Kosuji up on a truck while the delivery team forms a barrier around them before Akira burns down all the zombies with a flare. After that, Kosuji's men decide to quit, leaving him behind before Akira, Kencho, and Shizuka leave for Gunma in search of his family as he says that he isn't cut out for work so she tells him to do whatever he enjoys since no one knows what tomorrow brings. While on their way, Anchor admits he's surprised that he was able to check off 15 goals in such short time and excitedly thinks about if he'll be able to complete it in a month before they come to a stop in front of a truck being attacked by zombies. Seeing that there's a civilian alive, he quickly dons his superhero costume, and the three rush out to fight but are stopped when someone wearing traditional Japanese armor starts swiftly killing them all with her katana. They take off their mask, and it turns out to be a girl who introduces herself as Bellatrix. She tells them that she came all the way to Japan from Germany, but the apocalypse had already started on her arrival, which is why she went into survival mode and shows them her truck filled with fish saying that she recently finally found the last sushi chef in Japan and is going to pig out at his restaurant in Takasaki. Acknowledging her desire, Ekira enthusiastically agrees to get here there so they leave for the city but come across a massive horde of zombies which they try to beat in combat before Shizuka lures them into an enclosure with some noise and burns them all up using patrol. They later go to the restaurant where the chef happily makes them sushi and brings out his entire stock of sakes since they're probably going to be his last customers. Later, they decide to go to the nearest hot springs where Akira and Kencho happily jump in before Beatrix finds that the woman's pool is dried out and gets in with them, 
but they run away suddenly after seeing that it's infested with zombies. At night, as Akira wakes up as they're sleeping on a hill, he acknowledges his thirst and goes around to find water before seeing a hot pool in which he dives and only to find Shizuka bathing there as well so they take opposite sides of a boulder and have a heartfelt conversation before Kencho arrives with Bellatrix and hysterically accuses Akira of betraying him before asking if he and Shizuka have hooked up which they blushingly deny and jumping in with Bellatrix. As they near the village, Shizuka asks Akira if he's nervous which he denies but inwardly thinks about how awkward it'll be since it's been a long time since he left. Beatrix suddenly tells him to stop the car and they see that the tunnel ahead is blocked off. When they get out to investigate, they see that it's filled with zombies and has been sealed from both sides, so they decide to use the mountain trail where they run into a man being chased by a zombified boar which Beatrix easily takes out. The man thanks them for their help and introduces himself as Masaru Kumano before taking them to his settlement which Ekura surprisingly sees as a fine-looking treehouse, as Kencho and Shizuka wearily look at how his eyes have started sparkling. Akira asks if he can make a tree house with him to which Masaru happily agrees. Once they're done, they happily have fun in it before moving on to the village through paths from which Kencho almost dies. Once they reach the village and look down on it from above a cliff, they suddenly notice the silence and Akira worryingly runs for it before seeing that all the villagers are there and happily greeting his parents. Later, after he's done trying to help his dad in farming, he walks by a man and thinks he recognizes him. At night, the man along with his friends approaches the closed-off tunnel and remembers how he'd been shunned by society and had abruptly run into a zombie killing someone before blissfully finding out that the useless people are dying. As he was robbing an empty store, he ran into a group of people like him and they decided to make a notebook about the 100 things they wanted to do and says they might as well do whatever they want. And that's a wrap on this exciting recap for ZOM 100. From the mundane life of Akira Tendu to the thrilling zombie apocalypse, we've delved into it all. If you enjoyed this recap, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more thrilling adventures, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for our next journey through another fantastical anime world where we'll explore even more adventures. Until then, stay engaged and let's see what the zombie-filled world has in store for us.